there's a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen to the Amazon and other, other rainforests, and there's such rich resources on Earth. We have such a rare opportunity of putting an entire rainforest under a drought and seeing what happens. One of the things I really appreciate about B2 is that we can manipulate almost everything, whereas in a real tropical forest, we can't. We're in the Sonoran Desert. You drive to work and then you spend most of the day in what feels like a tropical forest. And then you walk out and you're surrounded by desert again. It's, it's a very, very strange experience and, and pretty neat. Scientists at the University of Arizona are using the Biosphere 2 tropical forest biome as a model system to understand how natural tropical forests, and in particular the Amazon, will respond to climate change. Their research takes place both at Biosphere 2 and the Brazilian Amazon. The Amazon rainforest is projected to get hotter and drier in the coming century. Researchers at Biosphere 2 will soon be conducting a series of drought experiments in the tropical forest biome to see how the ecosystem responds to drought. I'm Josan Haren, I'm an assistant research professor at Biosphere 2 and I'm partly in charge of the rainforest at Biosphere 2 but I also do work in the Amazon basin in Brazil. So the main question of the drought research at Biosphere 2 is what is the fate of the Amazon forest? under climate change. So with that, at Biosphere 2, we actually do the experimentation of how do plants respond to drought. It's the only tropical rainforest in the world where we actually can control the precipitation. We can have the rain there whenever we want. We will first start with short-term droughts, month long to about two months long, and we will increase the length of the drought over time, and that will conceivably uh, in about five to seven years start inducing mortality of trees. And that's also a key factor that we want to understand. What is that transition from the point that the trees are stressed to actually mortality setting in? How we use Biosphere 2 to actually inform what we do in, in the real world is really by looking more at the process level. So what is really happening at the leaf? What is happening at the whole tree scale and at the whole ecosystem scale? we can actually experimentally change the conditions for the plants and see how they respond. That then informs us what to look for in the real world. My name is Colby Jardine. I'm an assistant research professor at Biosphere 2 at the University of Arizona. So we're studying the atmosphere in the rainforest at B2 and we're looking for these different volatile oxidation products Volatile oxidation products are molecules that are released from leaves into the atmosphere. Some volatiles are made of plant lipids or fats. And so it's been observed in our laboratory and also in the Amazon that some of these lipids can actually be oxidized inside the plants. And that appears to happen during stress. So sort of the overall question is then, are these lipids serving a protective role in ecosystems under stress because all sorts of forms of stresses end up producing these very damaging and reactive forms of, of oxygen. And so we want to know if, if drought, in particular the lack of moisture with high temperatures, if that is associated with these lipid oxidation reactions happening inside of the plants, to help them sort of handle those conditions. You know, you hear a lot of talk about the negative things associated with climate change. This is one particular process that might help plants adapt to climate change. I'm Lauren Albert. I am a graduate student at the University of Arizona. I'm in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. So one of the things I'm interested in is how the drought might affect the upper limit at which a plant can survive, the thermotolerance of the plants. And so you might be thinking, well, why would a drought influence heat stress? Well, often when plants don't have enough water, they close up their stomata, the little pores in the leaf surface. And those leaves are closing their stomatal pores to conserve their water. But when they do that, they also might warm up because when leaves lose water, that water loss cools them. So the leaves might be adjusting to this 
drought situation by increasing their upper thermal limit. But on the other hand, you might expect that upper thermal limit to go down just because the leaf is under a lot of drought stress and it might be less able to deal with multiple types of stress. So there's still a lot we have to learn about how tropical forests respond to drought. The forest is just incredibly cool in the Amazon basin. It's just this vast sea of green that you can get lost in no time flat. It's full of all kinds of scary and, and dangerous critters. Scientific discoveries are on every corner and the people there are so happy and they're so friendly and they're so great to work with. And the forest is really just extraordinary. I mean, leaves the size of entire rooms and it's just an incredible experience to be one of the most biodiverse places on earth. <laughs>